Oh yeah, man. So shout out my guy mixed by Crook. If y'all if y'all don't know, then you feel me. Y'all gonna find out soon shout enough. Out Crook. Now you know Crook would t- would take you and S- SVG Prime yeah. around Mac and Cole yeah. and Ruchi. And one day Ruchi says, "Y'all always up in here, man. Come yeah. on, let me let me hear what y'all got, man." Yeah. So when Ruchi initially. Uh, uh, hit y'all with that. Was there any nerves? Or did y'all just jump in and get straight to it? I jumped in and got to it. I had to okay. myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Because, yeah. like, I always pulled up on Ruchi. I never asked to get on no song. You mm-hmm. feel me? Nothing mm-hmm. like that. Like, mm-hmm. I was just around bro to support because I was a genuine supporter of mm-hmm. what bro had going on. I had right. nothing but respect for him. Right. And, like, everything he was bringing to the game, who mm-hmm. he was representing, and all that type of shit. Mm-hmm. Like, so I never looked at being around him as like an opportunity to get on. Or, okay. You okay. feel me? Made it about me. I was yeah. there to support, bro. Yeah. I would go to his sessions and just listen and soak yeah. up things. Be like, damn, I would see him freestyle off the top and yeah. just one time he made thirteen songs in six hours. Just going to work. Yeah, he would. Jeez. Go, he yeah. wouldn't even. They would play a beat. He wouldn't even play the beat for like twenty seconds. He'd mm. be like, all right, load it up, go yeah. in. Yeah. He did thirteen songs in six hours, and I was just like. Fuck. That's that's a lot. Thirteen songs in six hours. You got people I that can make six songs in yeah, Okay, it was goodness. Just, yeah. It was motivating to see like that's actually possible. Yeah, you yeah. know what I mean. Yeah. Like he's on such a high level, but you feel me? Like I knew that that came with just perfecting your craft and just getting to it, being motivated, being hungry, mm, that's all right. that type of shit. So that's right. it put a hunger inside me, made me motivated. I'm like, all right, like mm. I seen that shit happen. Like mm. I could put that into my own game. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. Um, but yeah, I got up and had to prove myself. He, mm-hmm. he told me to not look at my phone and nothing like that. He so you like, can't, you got to go up in there butt naked. Yeah, just go up like, there and do your thing. Just go in there and rap, bro. Just go in there and rap. <laughs> oh, man. Did you feel, I mean, was, okay, so when you go up in there, like, that's a new challenge, right? Yeah. Were you worried a little bit or were you just like, I mean, hey. Nah. Yeah. Just do uh, it. Yeah. I just, it just felt right. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. and I don't know. I felt like. It was the opportunity I kind of was waiting for, mm-hmm. like, um, just to not to prove anything to anybody else, but to myself. Okay. Like, yeah. kind of yeah. like, okay, this is the biggest test you've had so far in music. Let's see what you do. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. do hey. right by it. You yeah. know what I mean? And pressure bust pipes, but it also yeah. make dumb. Y'all and see them things in his ears. Exactly. It also make them too, you yeah. know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, you see the boogers. <laughs> yeah, and, and that ended up being our first song together. It's mm-hmm. uh the back-to-back single we have. Okay. Was, uh, you feel me? We ended up shooting a video to it, all that type of shit. But, yeah. like, he fucked with it. People fucked with it. It was on a Cypress beat. Like, yeah. Shout out to Cypress. Yeah. 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 Richie gave me the Cypress beat to yeah. use. Like, it was yeah. all love. You know yeah. what I mean? He That's fucked with it. That's like, what's up. after we did it, he pulled me to the side, like, a few days later. He was like, hey, drop that song. Like, I'm thinking, because I'm at his session. He asked yeah. me to rap. I'm thinking it's his. Yeah. But, like, him being the real one that he is, yeah. you feel me? He was like, hey. Drop that song. Get it mm. mastered and drop it. Yeah. Like, so I'm like, damn, like, bro just gave me a song. Like, yeah, that's and love. I just started rapping that's type love. thing. So yeah. like, yeah. And then like not long after that, um, I ended up opening up for him. Um, and it, I wasn't even Mac and Co yet. Mm-hmm. But um, and shout out Boss Man. Yeah, boss shout man out Boss Man. You feel me? To be. Believing yeah. in me. You yeah. feel me? Because ever since then, life been, ain't never been the same. You feel mm. me? But um, TK from Art Baron, he shout ended up TK. getting me on the show. Yeah. Um, he was like, hey, Ruchi need an opener at the Roxy. I'm like, all right, bet. Yeah. And like, they, like the Mac and Cole homies knew me, but yeah. they didn't see that side of me yet. Like, yeah. So I ended up opening up for Ruchi. I got the crowd going on my energy crazy. Yeah. And then I remember uh, them like talking after, I guess, like Tuck was like, damn, you see Lotto? Like, that mm-hmm. was Lotto on stage. Like, whoop, whoop, whoop. And the next thing you know, I keep working. Mm-hmm. Boss man pulled me to the side one day, like, hey, bro, like, he wants to do Mac and Cole. Mm. And I was like, damn. (laughs) Shout out to that. And then like a week, week or two after that. So I'm thinking like, okay, cool. Like I got managers now. Like Mm -hmm. I'm just blessed to be just in that position as it is. Mm -hmm. A week or two later, Ruji put me to the side and he's like, hey, you want to go on tour? Mm. And I'm like, what? Yeah, that's the taco song tour. Yeah, he is like, bro, I got a spot for you on the bus. Like, tell me, you feel me? Come open up for me on tour. I'm like, nigga, hell yeah. What the fuck? (laughs) So, like, life just shifted after that. You know what I mean? It was crazy. It was a blessing. And ever since Mm -hmm. then, like, motherfuckers treated me like family. We've Mm -hmm. been gang ever since then. Mm -hmm. Like, locked the fuck in. Yeah. Yeah, that's what's up, man, because... You know, you're around these great people. Yeah. All right, can you remember a conversation that you and Ruchi have had 
that uh, that you would say was was pivotal to you and what you do. Maybe he gave you some game or some, yeah. gave you some motivation. Yeah. That's something that you hold near and dear to your heart. There's been numerous times of those, but mm -hmm. there's one that sticks out to me in particular. Like mm -hmm. I remember one day I was having a bad day. Mm -hmm. I forgot what was going on, but like I was sleeping on the homie's couch, living mm -hmm. in the Hoover's. I lived mm -hmm. on uh, 74th and Hoover, mm -hmm. sleeping on the homie's was couch. Was this the so time like, when you was like, you said you slept in your car, you yeah. was just going room to room? Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then like Ruchi knew my situation, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? So I guess I had posted something like on Instagram or something like that, like just regarding my bad day or whatever. Mm -hmm. So FaceTime me, he's like, what are you doing? I'm like, none on the couch, like, yeah. <laughs> you feel me? Yeah. On my bed type yeah. thing. Yeah. Like frustrated and he was like, get dressed. Yeah. I'm like, for what? He's like, nigga, just get dressed and look fly. I'm mm -hmm. like, all right, bet. Mm -hmm. He picks me up and he took me to a, a video shoot he had with MB, MB Nail. Mm -hmm. And then like, uh, we get out, uh, we getting ready to go to the shoot. He takes off his Mac and Co chain because I didn't have one yet. Take off his Mac and Co chain, put it on me. That's love. Like, you know yeah. what I mean? And yeah. like, I started to see just the love bro was showing me, like, just kind of like pick my spirits up. And mm -hmm. after that, um, I don't know if the same night or like a night after, um, Bro took me to a Grammy party. Ooh, yeah. what an experience. Man. Yeah. What an experience, yeah. a Grammy party. Yeah, he wow. took me to a Grammy party. Like, yeah. we had our own section. We had bottles and shit. Yeah. And I have a video of it. It's, like, crazy because I, I watched the video, and that's the pivotal moment I think of. Like, mm -hmm. I was in a setting I'd never been in. We around a bunch of celebrities. We mm -hmm. fucking kicking it with Omarion and shit. Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> weird shit that I never thought I would be a part of. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. And he just giving me game, just telling me how to move. Like, you know what I mean? Like, act like you've been here before. Move right. You feel me? Like, um, the biggest one is act like you've been here before. Yeah, no facts. Exactly. Like me. <laughs> you know what I mean? You don't want to yeah. look like no new booty out yeah, here. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Act yeah. like you've been here before. Move right. Move respectful. Yeah. Um, he was giving me a whole bunch of game where even when it comes to like my safety, like mm -hmm. as a man, like he'd be like, never be the last one to pull off in the parking lot. Mm -hmm. Like all this type of shit. It all happened that day. He was just giving me all types of game. But there's a video where in the section, I forgot who was recording it, but they're just taking the story like on Instagram. Mm -hmm. But he, bros in my ear talking to me. Like it's a party going on. People mm -hmm. popping bottles. The bottle girls are right there. Mm -hmm. But bros in my ear talking to me like mm -hmm. giving me real game about how I need to move, like, life's going to be different. And on top of that, he was telling me, like, you know how I took you on tour? Like, um, he's like, I, I see bigger for you, though. Like, I don't want you to think you're on Mac and Coke because you're going to be on my, in my shadow mm -hmm. and just be one of these artists. Like, mm -hmm. I see bigger for you. Like, one day you're going to have your own headlining tour, and I want you to put your homies on like I put you on. Like, so mm -hmm. they can live the life you live. And, like, because they know better feeling than that. Like... Like, why would I just soak it all in myself and just get all the glory when all my niggas can experience it, too? Man, that's good. Like, that's you feel good. me? Yeah. Like, yeah. like Ruchi got his first deal and he bought everybody Mac and Coke chains. Like, yeah, that's love. He <laughs> sounds like a very selfless person. Yeah. You got the selfish, but he sounds like he's he's unselfish. You yeah. Know? Willing to spread that love like that, man. That's Hey, that's amazing. Yeah, he teaches me a lot about being yeah. selfless, honestly. Like, yeah. not even on no music shit. He teaches me how to be a real dude. He, he'll... He'll approach you when you're not moving right, mm -hmm. but in a respectful, correct way. Like, bro, you was wrong for that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And he'll As tell he you why. Yeah, yeah you know what homie. I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. he'll check you yeah. like a real homie. Yeah. Like, not in no disrespectful way or coming at you foul, but yeah. in a correctional way. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Only with good intent mm -hmm. type thing. Like, I learned a lot from bro, mm -hmm. and I still look up to bro, inspire, uh, inspired by him, all that shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, it's helped me maneuver right. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I am where I am today. Like, that's dope. That's dope. Because of the hard work I put in based off the game he's giving me. You know what I mean? Yeah, shout out to Ruchi for that, man. How, shout out to Ruchi, dog. How, how important do you feel that that was for you at that time in your life? You know what I'm saying? For him to step up and do that. How important do you, like, in, like, in a clutch was that for you? It was real big because, to be real, I felt like I was always that person of my people. So okay. I didn't have that person okay. for me. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Understood. Was, I was always the friend I wish I had. Mm -hmm. But I didn't have that. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And I always wondered, like, when is a motherfucker going to look out for me? You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, majority of my life mm -hmm. type thing. And then once I locked in with Ruchi, like, that was, like, the first experience where a motherfucker looked out with me for me in a selfless way. Mm -hmm. Didn't want nothing in return. Like, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, I fuck with you. I got you. You know what I mean? Just do right with it. That's a beautiful thing, man. Yeah. For those of you who may not have known that about Ruchi, 
and understand. You know what I'm saying? It's all love. Yeah. Now, December 10, 2018, uh, you got the Rolling Loud after party, you know what I'm saying, at the Harvard Yard Bar. Yeah. And then also in 2018, uh, you would catch wind of people playing your music in Vancouver, Columbia. Yeah. Rich. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So uh, when you see, I mean, because it's one thing people to be playing your music in the city or even your family. Yeah. But when you know it's going around, and they sent you a video of this. Yeah. When you know it's going around like that. How much more successful are you feeling when you get that type of feedback? It's a good feeling. Yeah. Like, I feel like we're getting somewhere. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. We're in L.A. Mm -hmm. And I'm playing, me and playing Vancouver. Yeah, like, that's wild. <laughs> you know I mean? Like, that shit is crazy. And they going up. They're not yeah. just playing. They're yeah, no, they just really going in the up. car yeah. going crazy. Yeah, they know like, the song. You yeah, know what I'm saying? They heard they it before. they going viral. So that's I'm hard. Like, yeah, yeah, all right. Yeah. I got yeah. them out there fucking with it. And yeah. it's not even their type of music. Yeah. Like, see, so that's hard. It's yeah. only motivation. Yeah. Like, see where yeah. it can go. Yeah. And that's where, that was the start, 2018. Mm -hmm. That was the start. And it got that far. How much farther can it go? You and know it's, you mean? know, you know, the sky ain't the limit. It's, 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 it's way bigger Hell than no. that. You I'm know what I'm saying? I'm the rocket, motherfucker. We're going past the sky. <laughs> <laughs> on the real, on the rocket. I see, yeah. okay, I see how you did that. All you right, so... Me? From being in front of the Audio Mac stage to trending on Audio Mac mm -hmm. with Crook, Preen, Rucci, mm -hmm. March 4th, 2019. Yeah. Now, you done did the dub thing to yeah. be on the dub stage. Now, yeah. you getting to do the Audio Mac thing to be trending on Audio Mac. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? When you think about the blessings, bro, it's just blessing after blessing. It it's, is. It's, it's only up. You know what I'm saying? How mm -hmm. thankful are you to have even been able to really just stay the course on what you've been doing through everything that you were yeah. going through. I'm really thankful, but I know it's because I kept going. That's right. You At the end of the day, that's all that matters. Yeah. yeah. Training on Audio Mac was my first 100K I ever got on a song. 100 so, bands? Like, 100k, yeah. Ooh, you got a hundred thousand dollars? Oh no! Oh, you talking about hundred k? No, hundred k plays. Oh, I, I wish. Said... <laughs> Audio Mac, throw that bag, man. I'm gonna say, woo wee. Nah, that hell boy nah. hit a lick. <laughs> I wish I got a hundred k off my song. Nah, hundred k plays. For okay, sure. okay, okay, okay. That was the first time I hit a hundred k plays, and it was just like an mm -hmm. eye opener. Like, mm -hmm. damn, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um, and it again, it just motivated me to keep going because mm -hmm. I was like, I bet this is a song with features. Let me hit a hundred k solo. Mm. And then what's happening ended up doing hundred K on Spotify. Mm. So how long did it take? Um, less than a year. That's beautiful. Yeah, yeah that's beautiful. and that was the yeah. first song because mm. uh, I I had the full and freestyle, but I couldn't drop it on all platforms because it wasn't my beat. Okay. So my first real song that was on all platforms was mm. what's happening. Mm -hmm. Like that's what got the attention of like TK from our band. Mm -hmm. Like Shoreline ended up putting it on one of their like Spotify playlists. Mm -hmm. So it ended up shooting the, you know what I mean, the exposure of it out the roof. Mm -hmm. So the stream just started going crazy. I started seeing the dollars on my uh, tune core start going up. I'm See, like, yeah. why is it going up like that? And I checked the streams and it's at 100K. I'm like, oh, yeah, that's right. You Getting the bread. Getting yeah. to it. It makes exactly. sense. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. That's what's up. That's what's up, man. Now, um... Shout out to my guy Gabe C, man. Yes, sir. LA Carson Leakers. In the house, you know what I'm saying? LA Leakers, Power 106. Yes, sir. You know what Shout out they, Gabe. They would play Ain't Worried About Shit with you, Rucci and Preen. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Now, um, what's the relationship with Gabe C? You know, I, I know Gabe C has been somebody I can see that you were at least thankful for. For you sure. You know what I'm saying? For sure. So, when did you even like meet Gabe C? Well, you know, what's the relationship like with Gabe C? Uh, I honestly. I can't remember where we met, mm -hmm. but we were locked in because we had that Carson background. Okay. You know what I mean? Okay. Yeah. He a Filipino dude doing his shit. Mm -hmm. We got hella mutuals, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And then I uh, I admire what he had going on before I met him. Mm -hmm. Just uh, He would be talking about Carson on Power 106. I'm mm -hmm. like, dog, that's a dude putting on for the city, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And then um, one of the shows... I, I can't remember it was the uh, first time we did it. It was either at the Roxy or the El Rey. Mm -hmm. But either, uh, we did both and he did my set. Mm -hmm. And he looked out for me every time. He made sure my songs were in the order. He hit me up like before, like the communication was on point. And he would gas me up before I would go on stage, like mm -hmm. give me a good intro. Like, mm -hmm. got a young legend in the building, the Hawaiian mm -hmm. hot boy straight out of Carson, like giving me a whole boxing intro. You know what I mm -hmm. mean? Like, mm -hmm. so... I always appreciated him for mm -hmm. sure. And then he feel me, he didn't have to put me on the LA Leakers playlist, but mm -hmm. he did. I didn't even uh I he only had that song because he had it for my set on his computer. Okay. He didn't tell me like I didn't 
have a conversation with him like, oh, can I be on the radio? Yeah. He did that shit himself. I'm sure, it, I mean, I don't know if it ever works like that. Yeah, like, exactly. If you play me on the radio, I'm, I'm sure. Yeah, exactly. Feel you point, yeah. So, like, he went out of his way and made that shit happen. It was yeah. my first time on the radio and yeah. just hearing the L.A. Leakers tag on my yeah. song. L.A. Leakers, man. After yeah. growing up, you yeah. feel me, being in the yeah. car, going up with the homies, hearing yeah. that shit. Yeah. And then hearing my song on it is just yeah. crazy. It was like yeah. some crazy full circle shit. Yeah. For and real. I mean, because you think about it, man, you've had to work hard to get there. Hell yeah. Know? And as a lot of people got to understand, like, bro, this ain't no overnight thing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Not. It ain't no it's overnight thing. It's a long fucking thing. night. Facts. <laughs> it's a long <laughs> night if it's overnight. It's I like that. Night. I like it's a hell of a long yeah. night. Years of a night. Hell you know yeah. what I'm saying? Um, now, we talked about now the, the Taco Sun tour. Um, and this is where you would talk about remember sleeping in your car going room to room. Yeah. Now on the Taco Sun tour, what what what's something that uh, what were you in, impressed with? What were you shocked by while on this tour? Um, and, and and it hit you like, man, we really we really here. You know, this yeah. is really my first tour. This is really my first time being around these people or seeing this crowd. Yeah. What really like shocked you during that? I think it was in Seattle. Okay. The love out there was so crazy. We yeah. touched down in Seattle. We went and got some chicken from Zell's. It's a real good chicken spot okay, out there. Okay, Zell's, yeah. yeah. For sure. And then yeah. we went to the mall, and as soon as we walked in the mall, we getting stopped to take pictures and shit. People recognizing Ruchi. Superstars, yeah. yeah. Yeah, some little bitches recognize me. I'm yeah. like, bro, I got one song out. How the fuck y'all bitches know me? Like, <laughs> hey, hey, it starts small. Bro, you yeah, know what but saying? the, fact, the yeah. fact that they knew and was up on game out there, and we just walking through the mall, I'm like, damn, the love is crazy yeah, out in here. In Seattle, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and then, mm-hmm. so we, uh, we at the mall telling all the girls to come to the show. Mm-hmm. All the girls end up coming to the show. We mm-hmm. at the show. Telling all the girls to come back to the B and B. I remember I invited like six different girls to the B and B. Did they all show up or only two? They all them? showed up at the same time at the door. Oh man, that's what's up. Looking for yeah. me. Yeah, yeah. They all knocked at the, on the door. <laughs> I'm in my room changing after the show, and yeah. I think White John or somebody let them in. Yeah. Like, who y'all here for? They all said Lotto. Yeah. And like, <laughs> I, I don't know if it was John, but it was somebody. They were like. Oh, we'll take you to his room. Yeah. All of them at the same time. Ooh-wee. But I all told them individually to come. Yeah. Like, yeah. and then they come down to my room. You had to, you, hey, you had to how to be a player. Your six oh, for sure. Had that. For <laughs> sure. So I'm putting on my shirt and I yeah. turn around and all six bitches is in the room. I'm like, oh fuck! Ah. Like, I'm thinking it's about to go up. And they then, was chilling. Yeah, okay. and then I heard okay. one girl, one girl say. Wait, who are you here for? She goes, Lotto. Girl, me too. And oh. then they start drinking and shit. Oh, that's what's up. They went out. Next they went thing you know, other. all the bitches making out with each other. It yeah. was a movie. Oh, it was a movie. Yeah. Well, if you, you had a good time. time. <laughs> Seattle went the fuck up. <laughs> you like, had a good time. And that night, I realized, like, we really on some rock star shit. Yeah, for sure. Like, for sure. we went from, like, you feel me, having a little fan moments at the mall, having a good ass show, mm-hmm. packed out, going mm-hmm. stupid. Mm-hmm. Bitches is all over the B and B and like making out with each other on some movie project X shit. Yeah, you feel that's me? Like, different. Yeah, it was going <laughs> viral. You know what I mean? So yeah. like, that's when it sunk into me. I was just like, damn, yeah, I'm, we really out here. I'm yeah. really here. <laughs> you really living yeah, a life. I'm living yeah. this rock star yeah, life. That's like, what's it's up. viral. Like yeah. you, you can see on uh, if you look at the Taco Sun tour vlog, mm-hmm. after all the girls left. I'm walking around with one of their bras around my neck, and oh, I got my shirt off. You clown it. Yeah. Like. <laughs> hey, man, shout out to that. Make sure y'all look at the Taco Sun vlog. Yeah, okay, for remember, sure. remember that moment. Yeah. Um, okay, now you got on the Hawaiian Hot Boy shirt. Yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? You also yeah. have the Euro Stepper. Yeah. You showed several people, like, shout out my guy, Cyber Greeno. You showed him wearing, I believe he's wearing a Euro Stepper shirt. Yeah. He um, got this one, too. Okay, yeah, yeah. shout out. Now, when you would come up with your designs, who helped you come up with that design and that look? Because you got yeah. the hot boy, you kind of, kind of, you kind of yeah. have to come with that master P and them hot boy yeah, feel as exactly. well. Exactly. So when you came, I mean that shirt is active too. No, you know what I'm yeah, that for shirt sure. Is cool. So when you first came out with the with, with the merch and everything like that, what was your vision for? Was it was it exactly this or something different? Not exactly this. Okay. Like I had a, a cover like it before. Okay. But it didn't have like all the flames and all this shit. It said Hawaiian hot boy. Mm-hmm. 
but it didn't look like a hot boy cover. Mm -hmm. Like, so um, Tuck and Holiday told me to like revamp it a little bit. We ended up going with a different graphic designer. Mm -hmm. And I told him I wanted to, it to look like a hot boy cover because I grew up on Lil Wayne and the hot boys. Yeah, I always wanted to be like Lil Wayne because yeah, yeah, yeah. I was a young motherfucker running with all my older homies, older mm -hmm. cousins. Mm -hmm. I felt like Lil Wayne. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. and all his music just caught me. You Stuck know what I mean? You. you know what yeah. I mean? He inspired me the most out of this music shit. So. Mm -hmm. It was only right my first project because this is the artwork. I wanted my first project to represent like mm -hmm. the Hawaiian hot boys. Yeah, that's that's cool. the fuck that's I am. You know now I mean? the Euro stepper. Mm -hmm. uh, what's the significance with the Euro stepper? The Euro stepper is you feel me like uh, <laughs> I'm not gonna get too deep into okay, it. Okay, okay, yeah. yeah. Keep it, keep, keep, keep it. What they you know, call that? Yeah. Rated R, or G rated. It's G -rated I don't know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you feel me when uh, when opportunity calls and it's the right moment yeah. we euro stepping through life yeah. you feel me that's right that's we right stepping through life we <laughs> straight like that messing our way through it you know what i mean <laughs> straight like that hey, man. yeah so you know make sure you tap in and get your merch yeah now january 1st um you spoke about um you said i got a new crib mm -hmm. in my name yeah opened up a studio you know what I'm saying? And yeah. fought a gun case. If y'all know, we're sitting right here in the homie studio. Yeah. You know CTK what I'm saying? Studios. Yeah. You feel me? So, you know, coming from sleeping on couches, going yeah. car to car, to being able to get your own place to stay. Yeah. Um, let's just talk about that alone, bro. How how accomplished did you feel even being able to just make sure you can secure a roof over your head? Exactly. It's the biggest accomplishment in the world. Yeah. I still look at the ceiling and be like thankful every fucking day. Mm -hmm. Like that shit, you feel me? Like, it sound like whatever when you read it, but them long cold nights when you're sleeping in your car, that shit really gets to you mm -hmm. all the time. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Your back hurt, you mm -hmm. know, and there's no comfort in it. Mm -hmm. It's cold as a motherfucker. Mm -hmm. I'm looking out my window, making sure nobody's finna fuck with me, all that type of shit. Mm -hmm. Now I'm in the, I live in the birds. I don't live in the hood. You feel me? I think said, I'm way. tucked off. Yeah. yeah I'm definitely yeah. tucked out the way. Yeah. It's just a blessing. Yeah. It's a good feeling. Like, mm -hmm. so. That is just an accomplishment in itself, just knowing what I've been through the last couple of years and then um, opening my own studio. I always thought I was going to do that later down the line in my mm -hmm. music career. You know what I mean? Like that was something that maybe I'll do when I wrap it up mm -hmm. and it's time for me to just play the backside of it. But mm -hmm. you feel me? Once I touch them dough, because I done blew through so much money, man. Like, mm -hmm. especially. Is it, is it money that you like, damn, I should have did that? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I, and that's what it was. Like, yeah. I. I made so much money and then it came to a point where I had nothing to show for it. Mm, like, yeah, that's the part that hurts. Exactly. Most. Like I was looking back and I'm like, damn, like, yeah, I have fun, but I didn't do nothing with it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I was flexing. I went up with the bitches, but mm -hmm. I had nothing to show for it. Mm -hmm. I had no accomplishments, nothing to stand on. It was all in the past. So the next time I touch some dolls, like, you know what, I'm going to do something with it, invest it into something that I'm going to get back and something I could really say I, I accomplished. And then I was looking at my account, looking at my stash, and I'm like, you know what, I'm going to open a studio. Mm. You feel me? Everybody sure. in L.A. want to be a fucking rapper now. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. why not make money off these motherfuckers? You yeah, know what I mean? and it's very, very beneficial, and it feels good to the pocket. Bro. Yeah. Because you got to make an investment to do this. Exactly. But you know you're going to get that investment cheap, back. Man. Yeah, it was yeah. not cheap. Yeah. All this shit brand new. You yeah, feel you me? All the speakers, speakers brand new. speakers and all that. We got that. boxes in here fresh yeah. out. You feel me? Oh, like, all that type of shit. So TV screen up there, yeah, you know TV what I'm screen saying? mounted, all yeah. of that. So yeah. it was a, it was a, it was a real good feeling because mm -hmm. I didn't think I was going to do it this early in my career. You feel me? Because I ain't nowhere where I need to be, but I already mm -hmm. got my own shit, and it's cool. I could come here whenever I want, record mm -hmm. when I want, and listen to me? music and everything. Exactly, like just vibe out, yeah. get away, all yeah. that type of shit. Yeah. It's a blessing yeah. for real. Yeah. It's a blessing in itself. Yeah, that's right. That's right. How well? Okay, having your own studio, how much more beneficial do you feel like it is for you? Like you said, besides even being able to pull up and listen to your own music, but even make music. Yeah. How many times would you say you lock yourself up in here and you just you just up in here making music? Yeah, at least a couple times a week, mm -hmm. for sure. Because mm -hmm. to be honest, like I wouldn't, before I had it, I wouldn't book sessions that often. But when I would book them, I would go crazy. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That's how I build my catalog up and stuff like that. And I have hella music in the vault. Um, but now I, I, I come in here and it, it feels more like, I would say like, it don't, 
it feels like work, but it's more like a getaway. It's more therapeutic because mm-hmm. I know this is mine. It's like my safe place instead yeah, of me yeah, going yeah, to somebody's yeah, studio yeah. and just yeah. working. Mm-hmm. This is like a safe place. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's like mm-hmm. a getaway. I feel mm-hmm. like that's why my you know, I've been in, like more in my bag with my music lately too. Mm-hmm. Like because I come here and it feel like home. Mm-hmm. So I'm just. I'm just going in. You, know you find I mean? yourself be like, I can't wait to get to the studio tomorrow. Like, I can't yeah. Wait to get to the- <laughs> yeah. 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 Or I'm like, damn, I ain't doing shit. I'm going to go to the studio. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Straight like that. I mean, it's no better place to be than being able to work on your, uh, shoot, work on your craft. I'm yeah. tripping. I almost forgot the word. But Man, being able yeah. to work on your craft as much as you possibly can. Yeah. Um. Now, February 13th, mm-hmm. still thugging. First single on the radio. Shout out to Be Easy to DJ yeah. and Just Incredible. Shout out Be Easy. I seen man. you playing it. You was playing it on on the phone. And you like, yeah. man, it, like this is my first single ever. Hell yeah. So for your first single to be on the radio, mm-hmm. speak on that moment and, and what it meant to you. Man, it was a blessing. I had my family from Hawaii calling me. Oh like, yeah, yeah. What you on the radio? Yeah. Like this yeah. is and this like yeah. Cause I yeah I was on the radio before, but it being my own song, a mm-hmm. solo song, solo single, it was different. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like, and that's a song I actually really, really like. Like, okay. cause I feel like every song, every project, I get better. Mm-hmm. Like, I just started rapping like a couple years ago, so like I feel like I'm really getting in my bag. Now. That's how it like, goes. Yeah, how it melodies goes. is different. Mm-hmm. Bars is crazy. Like, I'm really flowing. Like, I'm I got it. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? So yeah. like. Still Thugging was a real good song. Mm-hmm. Uh, I love the beat. Shout out She's John. We got a whole project, mm-hmm. um, collab project, completely produced by him. Mm-hmm. He went crazy on the beat. So, like, um, I ended up sending Be Easy my whole project just because I wanted his input on it. Mm-hmm. And, like, he ended up putting Still Thugging on the radio. And it turned into that. It. Yeah, that's exactly. right. That's right. He's, uh, he's someone I met a while ago mm-hmm. um, through uh, my cousin, who's a mutual. And, um, he was telling me he's a he's a DJ uh, for the LA Leakers, and then um, so I literally just reached out. I'm like, hey, bro, I would like you feel me. I appreciate any constructive criticism you have on my project, so mm-hmm. I'm gonna drop it soon. Mm-hmm. He's like, I bet, send it over. I sent it. He was like, man, this shit is fire, fire. It's yeah. like a whole complete project. Yeah. Like he really yeah. got some shit, bro. Yeah. And then next thing you know, he dropped the playlist, and Still Duggan was on there, and I was like, damn. I'm like, <laughs> hey, going up, and it's yeah. just the beginning. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It is. It is. It's going to be the first of many for sure. Facts. Because I'm only getting better, yeah. I promise you. Facts. And shout out to that. Yes, um, sir. And by the way, you did a freestyle with Gina Views. Shout out to Gina Views. Oh, yeah. Um, shout out Gina. Yeah. <laughs> with the, this is how we do. She yeah. is goaded. You know what I'm saying? She's goaded like a motherfucker. <laughs> shout out Gina. If she you doing ain't her know. shit. She, Hell yeah. She's putting on for the city. She's yeah. making the city look good. Just did that situation with Sway. Yeah. Now, I want you to break down uh, Born 314. Pi mm-hmm. equals 314, which is known as an infinite decimal. Yeah. It reflects how my life is infinite. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And yeah. if you know his name, Kehlani, mm-hmm. it also means the royal one, yep. the heavens, the sky. The heavens. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So um, it speak to the importance of, of, of your alignment with all of this. Yeah. Um, I would say... I've beat the odds so many times in my life, and I always wondered why. Mm. Like, and I was always just thankful for it. Mm. But eventually, it started to make sense to me. Mm. Like, I'm here for a reason. That's right. There's some significance to my my soul being here for some reason, mm-hmm. and I have to let people know that. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because I see it. I beat the odds so many times. Mm-hmm. Od twice, still here. Mm. You know what I mean? Shootouts still here, all that type of shit. So when I say my life is infinite, like 314, the day I was born, it's like, I don't know no motherfucker like me. I'm different, you feel me? Like we said, island roots, LA, LA drip, LA everything, different. Nobody talk or look like me. I'm one of a fucking kind. Mm -hmm. So with this shit I do with the music, the shit I do with just putting on for my culture, I know I'm going to live forever. Right. You feel me? When I'm off this earth, I'm going to live forever. I'm going to be the first Hawaiian that did this shit. Like, and I want the generations after me to see what the fuck I did for my people and keep going with this shit. Give them the knowledge about the culture and the music and put on for the cultures. Talk about how it's corrupted and how our people would did dirty but still put on and represent because we got a voice in this shit. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So that's what I mean is I'm infinite. My life is infinite. I'm going to live forever because I'm going to 
put, I'm gonna be a staple in the game forever. You know what I mean? I will be infinite. I am infinite, you know? So, your uncle that was big in the reggae scene in Hawaii. Yeah. Um, what was the relationship like and what did he actually mean to you and everything you've got going on today? Man, it was everything to be honest. My dad, little brother. Okay. And um, I always fucked with him growing up and I knew he could sing. Mm -hmm. But then one day, um, my uh, my cousin was in Hawaii, but from the other side of okay. my family, like okay. not my dad's side. Okay. And they're like talking about this song on the radio that they in love with. Like mm -hmm. they telling us about this song. Mm -hmm. And then my dad looks it up and he's like, wait, that's my little brother. So your like, dad didn't even know. He didn't even know. He knew he was doing his shit. Yeah. He didn't know bro was buzzing on the radio out yeah. there and shit. Like yeah. really yeah. starting to come up. And this is back in like 07. So what's the radio station out there? Um, I can't remember. The, I can't remember, okay. honestly. It's okay. been so long, but yeah. it's all reggae. Yeah. They have basic little hip hop stations, but it's all the mainstream bullshit. You okay. know what I mean? Okay. But reggae is everything out there. They yeah. don't, like the, the youth will bump rap, okay. but they're always behind. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, so it's late, way late. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. I feel like the youth fucked with Shoreline Mafia just because of the name. Okay. Shoreline in Hawaii, you yeah. feel me? So like they oh, fucked wow. with Shoreline. Okay, heavy. so that correlates. Yeah, but okay. um, going back to my uncle, like um, he blew up quick out there when mm -hmm. I was young. And that I was probably like 10, 11, 12. Mm -hmm. He started selling out shows, going crazy. And then they started doing tours out here. And like bro ended up selling out the Roxy. Um, they sold out the observatory. And I'm backstage with him like... 10, 11, seeing mm. bro go crazy. Like, okay, see, I thought it was the Nova, it was the Roxy. Yeah, okay, gotcha, yeah, okay, gotcha, 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 yeah. yeah. And uh, I was running around backstage, little kid, but I'm seeing him do rehearsal and seeing how dope it was, like, and just admiring it, admiring the craft. And then I see him go out on stage and see the crowd go crazy. I'm like, damn, that's my uncle. People are screaming his song back to him like choir wow. practice, you know what yeah, I mean? Wow. And just seeing him have that star power it inspired the fuck out of me. Mm. And like, he told me at a young age, he's like, man, you could do this shit too. If you want to sing, if you want to rap, just start now. He's mm. like, so by the time you're old enough to really do it, you're ahead of the game. Wow. So that's yeah. like, I always kept music in my mind yeah. at a young age. So what's the relationship like with your uncle? Close as fuck. He always okay. giving me advice. He always giving me game. Mm -hmm. He told me a long, before Drake, I, this is what I remember, before Drake, he said, start learning how to sing and harmonize. I was like, why? Cause that's when I was rapping on my ukulele. Mm -hmm. He's like, because the rap game gonna change and motherfuckers gonna start singing. And so you need to be it. ready. He knew wow. it. It's so weird. He yeah. called it. I wow. swear to God, on my life, yeah. he called it. He's like, rappers are gonna start singing, yeah. and the game is gonna change, and you're gonna need that, like, pocket. You know what I mean? That direction and that versatility to yeah. make it. He's yeah. like, so don't just put all your eggs in one basket with rapping. Learn how to harmonize. Learn how to sing a little bit. Yeah. Because the rappers are going to start singing. Then Drake, that's how that came out. Yeah, well, the versatility. Yeah, versatility so, and artists so, came out. So, so when you began to see the artists really go that route, did you ever call Uncle and was like, hey, yeah. you was telling I the was truth? I was like, bro, I called it. And he even called out the offbeat rapping. He was like, okay. He was like, try to not be so in pocket on all your bars. Try mm -hmm. to be a little late or a little early. He was like, I promise you, it's going to catch people way different. And then Blueface came out. Wow. It was so weird. Yeah. He called everything. Yeah. I swear yeah. to God, it, yeah. I'm not making this shit up. I'm not just gassing bro up. None of that. That's crazy. He called that yeah. like in 2015, 16, when yeah. I was in, in Hawaii. He yeah. was like, if you're going to make, like when you start making music again, like be a little off. Yeah. It's going to catch people different. Like yeah. that, people start to feel it differently. Like. Yeah. I'm like, all right. And then Blueface start rapping off beat and everyone, he go crazy. You remember Blueface when, yeah, when he first did that? Yeah, he, he was viral. viral. Yeah, exactly. Hell, so yeah. I, he said that and I hear Blueface blow up. I'm like, damn, he did it again. He yeah. know exactly what the fuck he's And that wasn't about. necessarily anything we really understood. We was kind of like, what's wrong with bro? Yeah, but, but at the same time, listen. yeah, at the same time, it's a beautiful thing because when you break it down like that, yeah. That's how that helps me understand. It's really art. Yeah. It's no like one way to do it's this. Not it's at all. really art. The mm -hmm. different colors you see, the different yeah. drawings, it's art. That's and the crazy. It's gonna change too. Yeah. You yeah. know what I it's mean? It's gonna continue to change. It's gonna continue. So, always. Okay, so if you could put your two cents on it, what do you think is coming next? Shit. 
probably can't even. It's probably I unimaginable tell, right now. Nobody <laughs> ever knows. Yeah, yeah. It fact. pops up and then yeah. everybody hops on and tries yeah. to do it the best they can. Or yeah. does they own flip on it? You right. know what I mean? Yeah. Like, has they own had their own flavor to it? Yeah. Like that's what I try to do. Is I always try to stay true to my style, mm -hmm. but give a little bit of the flavor so people know I'm up to date. You feel me? And I could rock with whatever's going on right now. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That's right. That's right. Yeah. So what is your uncle's name out there if people can yeah. YouTube his music? Yeah, he's, he's the lead singer of Rebel Soldier. Okay. Uh, Rebel one Soldier. of the top bands in Hawaii and okay. in the world, actually. They toured in New Zealand, Australia. Oh, so they still going up? Yeah. Okay. For sure. Yeah, for okay. sure. They've okay. been in the game for over 10 years just going up. They still wow. selling out shows. Yeah, They're wow. like one of the top bands in Hawaii. Like, wow. they go stupid. Yeah. They're, they're amazing, bro. So yeah. his name's, uh, he's the lead singer of uh, Rebel Soldier. They call him Mr. Rebel. Yeah. You feel me? He's Mike McGlinchey. That's my uncle, my blood uncle. Okay. From Nine Fold, yeah. Waipahu. Yeah. You feel me? Waipahu. Yeah. yeah. That's where your family's from, Waipahu. Yeah. Okay. Waipahu yeah. and Nanakui. Okay. So, yeah. okay. If there is a difference between the cities, because you know it's like a difference between Inglewood and Hawthorne, exactly. a difference from the Crenshaw District yeah. to, to, to well, uh, West LA, yeah. what are some of the differences between Wapahu, uh, 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 Oahu? Well, Oahu is the island. Okay. So it's like there's Waikiki, okay. there's Honolulu, yeah. there's Waipahu, there's yeah. Nanaku. So what are the differences? What are some of the differences? All right, so Waikiki is the tourist. Okay. Spot. That's okay. where all the hotels are at. That's where the Waikiki Strip is. Mm -hmm. All the stores, the mall, and all that shit. Mm -hmm. Honolulu is like the city where the airport's at. Mm -hmm. All that type of shit where pretty much downtown is. Okay. But after that, there's not really no more city. It's just like small towns and stuff like that. Okay. Waipahu's on the way to the west side. Mm -hmm. Like, you'll get it'll get way more culture out there. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. we'll see a lot less tourists. You know what I mean? Because um, it's probably like. I'll say 20, 30 minutes from Waikiki okay. or t from town. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's where my family's from, the Naifo block, you know what I mean? Like, um, and then further down towards the west side, probably like 40-ish minutes maybe or less. Yeah, that's if a I'm, long time. You feel me? Yeah, With steady traffic, you yeah. know what I mean? 35 miles per hour, I mean, I guess. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> um, that's the west side yeah. where uh, my mama's from, and that's where it gets super, super Hawaiian, super Kanaka, super rugged, native, all that shit. Okay, you so me? when you say super Kanaka, is that kind of like super ghetto out here? Nah, Kanaka means like Hawaiian, like native. Okay. Yeah. So is it is it like a, a ghetto side of yeah. Hawaii? Yeah, not okay. actually. I wouldn't call it ghetto in the sense of like, it's ugly or dirty. It's yeah. like... Like when we think about ghetto out here. Yeah, okay. it's like rugged. Like okay. you'll get pressed if you're not from there type thing. Like if you in a tourist car and you at Nanakuli Beach and you just look like you don't need to be there, they're going to press you. They're going to press what you? What the fuck are you doing over here? Oh, man. You know what I mean? Oh, man. <laughs> and if you, especially if you litter on one of them beaches. You don't clean yeah. up your mess. If you go bring some drinks and shit on the beach and you don't clean up before you leave, you're getting your ass whooped. Like, mm. you're getting pressed. Mm. Or even there's a military base on Oahu. Like, if the military people come on that side and they park their car to go to the beach, people are going to fuck with them. Because the military base has stickers for their parking and stuff like that, so you know it's a military car. Mm. So people are going to fuck with them. It's like, only natives belong on that side. Oh, so you know stay I mean? away from there. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, the, it's the dark, melanated Hawaiians. Like, uh. You so they mean? look like me? No, for sure. Okay. My dad, same color as you. Okay. Like, you okay. know what I mean? The yeah. dark, super... Well, see, it's a lot of black people out there that people probably don't understand. Nah, yeah, yeah, for sure. Okay. A lot of people believe Hawaiians are black. We got, like, if you look at the ancient Hawaiians, uh -huh. they got afros, and they're dark. Really? They're melanated. Yeah. Really? Look, look up the uh, ancient Hawaiians on Google. Okay, because, see, all of my life, I had only... I mean, you know, growing up as a kid, all I saw was your color. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. And I'm thinking, like, that's all that's out there. Yeah. But as I got older, I'm like, it's black people everywhere. No, for sure. Okay, okay. For sure. Now, is it, is it gang violence out there or anything like that? I wouldn't say it's violence because out there, everybody fights. Like, if oh. you pick up a gun, you're a bitch out there. Oh. It happens. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. There's gangs out there. There's the Halava Cribs. There's the blood and there's the Bloods in the Nine Fo. Yeah. Like, it's not like out here, though. Like, okay. Fighting is everything out there. Okay, I'm going to tell you one thing. Hawaii is the only place you will go 
and niggas is throwing leg kicks in the face mm. because everybody trains MMA out there. Mm. You got an MMA background? Hell yeah, my my uh, grandfather is a, a, a sensei. Okay, so okay, so this is what y'all need to know about Lotto. He got a squabble. Yeah, he got a squabble. Sure. <laughs> everybody, everybody in my family is fighters. Yeah, everybody okay. in my family is fighters. Okay. So is that, I mean, so is that, that's just culture out there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, like motherfuckers squabbling and they breathing, mm. and they throwing leg kicks, mm. and like people don't realize how much leg kicks work. You working that uh, that front leg, that mm. lead leg, yeah. boom, boom. Boom. Eventually, Eventually he starts out. to get a Charlie horse. Uh, so motherfuckers got to switch their feet. Uh, they fight not, not how they used to. Yeah. And then you just take advantage. Free game. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Free game. Like, look up look up Hawaii scraps on YouTube. Hawaii Anybody scraps. who watching this. Not Hawaii fights, Hawaii scraps. You'll see Hawaiians, no shirt, barefoot, squabbling in the street, yeah. throwing leg kicks. Breathing when they fight, yeah, yeah. like they boxers, you know okay. what I mean, like they MMA fighters. Now barefoot, okay, because mm-hmm. I noticed that's a thing as well. Yeah. I was on an All Star team, and it was a big Hawaiian dude who was funny as hell. I mean, bro, it was comedy. Yeah. Um, but he walked around here with barefoot. Yeah. We prank called him one day. We uh-huh. prank called him. We was in a hotel. Hey, you little bitch ass nigga, we gonna fuck you up. <laughs> nigga, meet me, nigga, meet us in the lobby, right? Yeah. With me and <laughs> me and my roommates go to the lobby. When we get out the elevator, bro, standing there like barefooted. <laughs> yeah. Like, what's up? Where them niggas at? Man, the niggas called me. Yeah. I'm like, what? We, <laughs> we start dying laughing like that was, was us. Ready. But barefooted though. Yeah. So explain the the you know um because we don't we don't we don't we don't go outside barefooted yeah. like that here. So explain, you know, where the comfort, you know, where does that come from? The, the barefoot. That's just keeping the culture. Okay. Our ancestors didn't have shoes when they was in war. Okay. You okay. feel me? Yeah. Like, yeah. and they went to war. You yeah. feel me? There was a time where all the Hawaiian islands was divided. Mm. They all went to war with each other. Mm. There was one king, King Kamehameha, who it was prophesied he was going to be the king that united all the islands, and he did that. He conquered every island one by one until all the islands were united. So he went to war with everybody. Mm-hmm. Oh wow! You know your history. Yeah. I'm tapped the fuck in. Like, I know my Hawaiian <laughs> history, bro. Like, I'm not just, oh, I'm Hawaiian. I'm going to call myself a Hawaiian hot boy. Yeah. Motherfucker, I know my shit. I know yeah. my history. Like, yeah. ask me anything, I will tell you. Yeah. Like, I'm, That's what's up. I'm deeply rooted in this shit, and I'm yeah. proud of it. It's who yeah. I am. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. That's why I want to be the first person to open this lane for everybody else. Not mm-hmm. just, like, in a selfish way, but to put on for my people mm-hmm. and tell our stories because mm-hmm. nobody's done that yet mm-hmm. in this in the rap game. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Mm-hmm. It might be in reggae for mm-hmm. sure because Hawaiian reggae is everything out there. Mm-hmm. But in the rap game, my story ain't been told on a big platform yet. Mm-hmm. And see, oh, I know that's why you know you even said you're gonna be the first islander to ever do it. You're the only islander yeah. doing it the way that yeah. you're doing it. I want to take. Some of that back because I ain't the first islander to do it. Okay, I'm gonna be the first Hawaiian to do it. Cause okay, I give. All props and respect to the Booyah Tribe. Oh, shout out to Booyah Tribe. Yeah, yeah, yeah Booyah sure. Tribe, you yeah. feel me? Rest in peace, Gangsta Red. Yeah. Uh, Uncle Red used to come to my uh, house and play dominoes with my dad and yeah. rap, on bing, beat on the table like Sugar Free and yeah. spit rhymes. So they are Hawaiian? No, uh, Booyah Tribe, Samoan. Okay, Samoan. Yeah, okay. so that's why I said I'm not the first Islander because okay. they paved the way in the Islander category. Yeah. Like Booyah Tribe, you feel me? They got songs with Eminem. Yeah. They got songs with Mac-10. Yeah. They, you feel me? They They... We're on tour with Tupac. You yeah. know what I mean? They they did their shit. So yeah. like, yeah, I say I'm like the hottest islander, whoop de whoop de whoop. But I won't say I'm the first islander to do it. Okay, gotcha. Like, gotcha, if I gotcha. ever said that, yeah. I'm taking back on that word. But I'm gonna be the first Hawaiian yeah. to do it. I'm gonna yeah. put on for my people because Respect. I won't discredit the Booyah Tribe for everything they did because I came up listening to them inspired. Like, Respect. damn, you yeah. feel me? Respect. I'm listening to my uncle Red, yeah. rest in peace, Gangster Red again from Booyah Tribe. You yeah. feel me? Rapping in Which my backyard, I'm like, damn, this Samoan nigga with braids, he a blood, he just rapping in my backyard like yeah. nothing. Like, yeah. I could do Going that up. too. You yeah, feel fact. me? So, okay, what are the differences? Um, okay, you got Hawaiian, you got Samoan, you got yeah. Tongan. I'm not sure if anything else, you know, Fijian, disrespect. Tahitian. Okay, so yeah. what are, okay, because you know the differences like yeah. nobody else. Yeah. So what are some of the differences that, that, that you like could, could speak of to help people understand how to separate this? Yeah. You know? Well, we're all Polynesian. Okay, so, so everybody's Polynesian. Yeah, Polynesia consists of Hawaii, Tahiti, Samoa, Tonga, Fiji, mm-hmm. um, and I want to say New Zealand, but correct me if I'm wrong. I could be, I could be wrong, but I want to say New Zealand too. Um, that's the islands of Polynesia. Okay. And that's 
Pacific Islanders and shit like that. I want the only diff. We're all the same. We all come from the same place. Mm-hmm. Like I've heard stories that Hawaiians came from Tahiti, and I've heard stories that um, people from New Zealand, the Maori people, came from Hawaii. Mm-hmm. Like there's a bunch of different stories. Like I could be wrong, but it's what I've heard. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Mm-hmm. So like we all are the same people. We just mm-hmm. on different islands. Mm-hmm. You feel me? We got different roots, different languages, but the languages are similar. Mm-hmm. If you look at the Hawaiian language and the Samoan language, it's it's very similar. But it's just it's has different, different letters in the alphabet. Oh, okay. A lot of the words are like there's like a K instead of a T type thing. Yeah. yeah. Like Okay. Got you. Now you now so you are well coerced in your language. Yeah. So I, what do they what do they call your language? Olelo. Olelo Hawaii. Yeah. Olelo Hawaii. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So that so that's kind of like our English. Yeah. Olelo sure. Hawaii. Okay. How long did it kind of take you to catch on to English? Um. Well, English was my first language, but okay. like growing up, my uncle, cause like just like I said about the hula dancing, when um, America and the British came over and took over the islands, they made it illegal to speak the Hawaiian language. Wow. So, okay. Yeah. Okay. So that's also something we take into consideration too, and like treat it like a sacred. Because uh, growing up, my uncle, like, he would speak Hawaiian to us. And if we wanted something, we would have to ask for it in Hawaiian. Mm, you know, so that's help, that helped y'all learn. Exactly. Okay. Like, okay. we would ask for something, he'd be like, uh-uh. Olelo yeah. Hawaii. And yeah. then, like, we'd have to say it in Hawaiian. And yeah. then we would move forward from there and, like, get what we wanted and shit like that. Oh, wow. Okay. So, well, that's a way, to, I mean, that's a way to help anybody learn yeah, something. Exactly. Or even grow yeah, English always been my first language. And yeah. I took... Uh, I took two semesters of it at Hawaii. They teach Hawaiian language. They have a Hawaiian language 101, 102. Okay. All that shit. Okay. At, That's uh, what's up. At the university. So I, I studied more of it over there, too. Yeah. That's what's up. Yeah. What's your favorite Hawaiian dish? Something that's that's just, just all Hawaiian. La, we la. might not ever get there. Yeah. I mean, we might not ever get that here. Yeah. Uh, they, ha- they actually have a spot that serves a, a really close, close, close... Um, Authentic version. Is it's it? On, oh, is it? I was gonna say. I it's on it's Normandy and One Ninety with and Gardena. Okay. Um, it's at Anti Mileage if you ever want to check it out. But um, it's right. called Lao Lao. It's um, taro leaves. It's either pork or chicken or beef or whatever you want to put it. Whatever kind of meat. It's uh, wrapped in taro leaves, steamed. It has butterfish in it. It's fire. Butterfish. It sounds crazy. I never heard of that. No, it's fire. It mm-hmm. sounds crazy. But it's steamed and it's like seasoned really well. Yeah. It, it looks like a, a green tamale almost. Oh, wow. Okay. You know what I mean? Because yeah. it's a taro leaf. Yeah. Um, but, oh yeah, or, or a luau leaf, whatever you want to call it. Mm-hmm. But um, it's amazing. Mm-hmm. And my mama used to make them all the time. So it's like really authentic to me. You know okay. what I mean? Gotcha. Like, that's my favorite Hawaiian dish for sure. Yeah. Uh, that with some lomi salmon or some ahi poke. Mm-hmm. I was I was gonna say I know you're not gonna say oh no Hawaiian barbecue. Oh hell no, <laughs> that ain't that real shit, bro. Hell no, nah. that's just a nice nah, a knockoff. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie, man. Talking to you has made me want to see all sides yeah. of, of Hawaii, bro. Like yeah. I want to. I, I, I mean, that's my goal, man. I'm just trying to, you feel yeah. me? I'm I mean, you permit, it. It. yeah, you permit for us to go to that side, but I kind of yeah. want to just see what it's like because. Yeah. You know, I have a picture of Hawaii in my mind, you know, and I just want to see if that's what it is. You know what I'm saying? But it's a lot more than people think. Yeah. And I even heard that the fruit tastes better out there. Everything does. Yeah. They were saying the fruit out here, that you eat fruit out there and come back out here. Yeah. Did you go through that? Yeah. The fish, everything, because everything's caught fresh out there. Uh, I was eating poke, sushi, salmon. After living out there and eating the fish out there, the fruit out there, and then coming back here, it's crazy. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. Like... It's, uh, the flavor is just not as fresh. It's not mm-hmm. as flavorful. Mm-hmm. It's crazy. Mm-hmm. Even if you if you get the right weed out there too, I would say the weed better out there. Like, yeah. That's new. I ain't never heard that. I always heard California got the best weed. Of That's course, a first right California there. got gas. <laughs> I'm never gonna take that away. But I've never had a euphoric high like I had in Hawaii. Wow. Like, is it legal? Out- well, I mean, that part of the United States. They got dispensaries out there, but I. I feel like you could still get in trouble for it. Mm-hmm. Like they got this, you gotta. It's like back in the day where you used to have to get a card to go. Yeah. Like now you can just walk in and show your ID. Yeah. Like back in the day in Cali, you used to have to go get the card. Yeah. And then you bring yeah, the card to the dispensary. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, th- I think it's like that out there. I could be wrong, but yeah. um, I remember smoking on the beach out there and just like 
feeling like I was like on another planet. Yeah, like, that was the strand you had. No, huh? exactly. <laughs> and like you gotta think about it, like it's, it's Hawaiian soil. Yeah, it's just different. If, yeah. if it's like grown out there, like. It's different. Mm -hmm. I, I can't really explain it or put it into words, but I remember smoking on the beach and looking at the ocean, looking at the sunset with the cotton candy colored sky, and then mm -hmm. looking at the mountains behind me, the green, beautiful mountains behind me. Mm -hmm. I'm just like, damn. Yeah, that sounds like, beautiful. Yeah, like I beautiful. get, it could be just the environment I was in. Yeah. Like, cause over here, I'm smoking in my car, I'm looking out for ops and shit. Like, yeah. you feel me? Like, yeah. or I'm just smoking thinking about other shit in LA or whatever, yeah. but like out there, it's just a euphoric high. Like you just escape yeah. and you just admire the beauty around you. It's crazy, it's yeah. different. That's so, a like, beautiful thing, man. Yeah. Like, um, yeah, I mean, shoot, I, you know, what you, made, what you made me think of was when people talk about Mexican food out here yeah. compared to when they go to like Oklahoma or oh, Texas, definitely. they be like, that is not Mexican food out there. Yeah. So yeah, now I feel like you really got to get, in order to get a taste of Hawaii, you have to go. You have to go. And that's just really, but that's yeah. probably what it is for everything. And if you go hit me yeah. up, I'll tell you everywhere to go. Yeah. I'll be the little tour Oh, I'm for sure. Know. I'm for yeah. sure. I'm hitting Lotto as yeah. soon as me and my fiance <laughs> book tickets. I'm hitting yeah. Lotto. What we need to do out here? Where we need to go? I'll give you a list, bro. <laughs> on I everything. On everything. I need all of that, man. Yeah. So, um, shout out to Uncle. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Shout out to for, Uncle. for him being a vessel, you know. And Definitely. It's funny that you said your dad didn't even recognize who he was for a second on the radio. Yeah. That's something crazy. Oh, God. But well, shout out to that. How much do you think about him when you go through your own musical journey, though? A lot. A lot. I remember uh, I had a full circle moment in Seattle when we did that show that I was talking about earlier. Um, we were in the green room, and I look up, and I see a Rebel Soldier sticker on the wall. Wow. So I was like, damn, bro, did a show here before. So yeah. I, I FaceTimed him. I'm like, did you put this sticker on the wall? Yeah. He's like, where are you? I'm like, I'm in Seattle. Yeah. He's like, yeah. <laughs> I'm crazy. like, bro, I'm about to do a show here right yeah. now. And I was just like, damn, bro, like. He really paved the way. You yeah. know what I mean? Just yeah. seeing him do it made me feel like I could do it. You Years know? later. Yeah, Look exactly. In my own lane, doing my own shit. Like, That's not right. writing off his name in any way, but just doing my shit. That's he right. always tells me to keep going. Yeah. That's pr that's the last thing he told me when I was on the island in October. Yeah. He, I said bye to him. He was like, hey, keep going. Don't stop. Don't stop. Yeah. Exactly. That's right. that's right. Shout out to us for yeah, that. Yeah, shout out to Uncle Mike. Shout out to Mike. That's right. So when you think about everything you've been through, what did you clap it up for? Shit, still being here, not stopping, um, going on and on, no matter what was going on around me, no matter who was telling me what, not listening to nothing and just following my heart and following what I knew I was capable of and what I needed to do. That's right. Like, that's, that's what I clap it up for. That's for right. Sure. Straight like that. Make sure y'all tap in on my boy Lotto Rocket. Yes, sir. Clap it up, LA. We out.